today's between master and disciples will be presented in Chinese and English with subtitles in English, German, French, Chinese, Olexis, Arabic, and Spanish. Formosa is a small island, but not very natural beauty. From the south to the north, the coastline has mountains, the village towns, the beautiful hills, the beautiful hills, the beautiful hills, and the exquisite temples. On the south coast, there are a series of beautiful beaches, the beautiful sky, the calm waters, and the beautiful animals. On the south coast, the cultural center of the island is still preserved, but it still retains a lot of ancient immigrants. It still retains a lot of ancient immigrants. It still retains a lot of 福尔摩沙有成千上万的人在修行观音法门，如今也已因为经济独立和其实力受到国际上的瞩目和尊重。努力修行的功德已为这个国家带来繁荣和富庶。因为这些修行人的诚心和功德，使得福尔摩沙享受了安定祥和的福报。近日来，青海无上师回应了我们世界会会员诚挚的渴望，于零七年二月十八日参加新年的庆祝活动，与来自全世界约一万名的世界会会员与贵宾，在福尔摩沙欢庆猪年的农历新年。这吉祥的日子当天，也是全球优秀领导奖的颁奖典礼。青海无上师颁奖给菲律宾前总统罗姆斯，故事和平奖基金会会长曼纽尔·摩纳托先生和参议院赫赫生阿尔瓦雷兹，表彰他们在菲律宾对优乐难民所做的慈善义举。在庆祝典礼后，国际禅紧接着进行。青海无上师和世界会会员一起打坐，为全世界和平祈祷。二零零七年二月二十二日是青海日，会员们以精彩的表演节目盛大庆祝这个节日。现在我们邀请您聆听青海无上师于二零零七年二月二十四日的开始，主题是青年的纳斯鲁丁国王。Okay, now there's another story about a Muslim king in Delhi. In all true religious、uh, order, all enlightened saints in that order act similar. Like, okay, the story I have told you about Guru Nanak, yeah. I don't remember if I have told you how he lived his life. When he was wandering around,、uh, he never go begging for food or try to get any、uh, any money or anything for himself. He just、uh, walk along and eat the berries in the forest and the wild fruit, yeah, and whatever come naturally. If people come and give them him naturally, perhaps he take it and just enough to live. Okay, so now、uh, similar huh? Sakyamuni Buddha. Is also eat once a day, and just wear you know whatever clothes that is、uh, given to him. That's simple, yeah. And Jesus Christ also do not take any money because he wasn't working at that time. He was working before, but he didn't work at that time. So he just go around, even ask water from anyone you know who has it to draw it from the well, whatever for him. So you see, all the true practitioners of the spiritual path act the same way. Either they earn their own money as a householders and save it until they have enough to go and preach the Dharma, or if they have to rely on the public donation, then they take only enough to survive in order to serve people. Spiritually, now there is a king who is a Muslim who ruled Delhi at that time. His name is Nasiruddin. Yes. Oh, by the way,、uh, I have to read you also the、um, the preface of this. It's called honest honest earnings. It's from、uh, Hebrews saying Hebrew. 
the Jews. Can you imagine this? Okay. <laughs> By chance we also came into Jewish tradition too. Here goes. Let your conversation be without covetousness, I mean without greediness, yeah? And be content with such things as ye have. I mean, whatever you have, be happy with it. No greedy, no wanting any more than what you already have or what is naturally coming to your way. For he had said, I mean God, for he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. The Lord is my shepherd, my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. You see, if you have faith in God, you become fearless. That's what it means. And just be happy with whatever you have. You see, all religion say the same thing. Be honest, earn your living, live simply. Yeah, okay. Now, the king Nasiruddin was one of those, one of those who lived exactly according to what we were saying now from the Jewish tradition, Jewish religious tradition. He was a Muslim ruler who stayed in Delhi. And, and he never spent a penny out of his treasury for himself. But he always earned his own living. So what did he do to earn his living? How does the king earn a living. Mostly king and royalties are not allowed to work, actually, for fear of uh, losing their dignity and authority. Yeah? You become like a commoner then. You become like a worker then. You know, a money earner like everybody else. And how would he rule if he does that? It's a wonder, hey? We shall see. What does he do? What did he do to earn a living? Can you guess? Can you tell me? Maybe you read it already. Any Indian people? Nope. Okay, but never mind. The Indian people, they don't need. You know why? They have faith in God. They don't care if you're Sikh. They don't care if you're Hindu. They don't care if you are Muslim. If you are a sincere devotee, no, they accept you. Yeah? They respect all religions. You will never find anywhere in the world <laughs> that has so many religions in one country or even in one district or even in one village and they live side by side uh, despite the different faith that they have. It's wonderful, it's colorful. Even people worship rats or snakes or statues, they don't care. They all know that in their heart even though as simple as they, their minds are, they know they are worshipping God in different way. So let it be. <laughs> so therefore, even if, as my own experience, even if you walk into any household in India, the most simple peasant who has not even a chance to study any religious scripture, you will find them very, very eloquent in telling you about God in whatever mean, whatever they understand it. The first thing they would, would greet you is one of the name of God. They will choose one name or another, depends. Maybe you walk in the house or in, in the gate and they already come out, you know, a sturdy mm, uh, farmer wife, you know, weather face and very, uh, I would say very simple in demeanor but bright eyes, you know, glorious smile, and such a friendliness that you would want to stay there forever. First thing, open a gate, or when you just walk in, there's no gate anyway. Come in and say, Hari Hari Nam Nam, something like that, okay? Or oh, Hari Hari Krishna, anything that is belong to God. They greet you like that immediately with the most friendly, glorious face you have ever seen. Okay, so that is India. 
I saw there no need for them to study too much about religious scripture because they're such a peaceful people. There are some exceptions, of course, that came probably from foreign uh, you know, uh, influence, yeah, or some fanatic somewhere. But the Muslim in India, the Hindu, the Buddhist, uh, the... Um, there's other... Baha'i faith, faith. Uh, there's another one, small. They wear this. A Jainism, the Jainism people. Uh, the Sikh, yeah, or whatever small other sect very small section of religious uh, group. They all live side by side peacefully. Yeah. Has never been truly religious war in India. Uh, huh? Okay, I want to ask you, how do you imagine a king in India, or the king at that time, even a Muslim king, would earn his own living and discharging his duty as king also. What else can a king do to keep also his dignity as a king and still earn a living? Everybody else can have a reward if you guess it right. Tell me now. Anyone? Nem? Nada? Nix? <laughs> Tell me. Wait. Hire somebody who works on his farm, then he's not working himself. Uh -huh. so he's working himself for Selling. his own idea, his own, his own means. Yeah? Selling the Quran and uh, caps of the, you know, Muslim. Quran, the spiritual books, uh, like a Bible, Muslim Bible. The Muslim Bible? What did he do with it? Sell the book. Quran, Sell the Quran. book? Uh, Quran. Well, it doesn't belong to him how he sell it. How did he sell it? Uh, earned the money by the selling Quran. He sell the poetry. He sell his portrait, poetry, painting. Yeah. Painting and poetry. He paints a portrait yeah. and sell it, his painting. He said uh, to sell spiritual books, the yeah, Quran. No, but how? By hand. By handwriting. Yeah, correct. Did you read the story? <laughs> yes, yes. You did? Okay. <laughs> Good. That's it. That's what he did. That's what the king did. After taking care of all the court uh, matter in the daytime, at night he went home and he copied the Quran by his own writing, handwriting, and tell his servant to go sell it in the market. <laughs> Just spiritual work, yeah. And whatever he earned from that, he spent for himself and his family. Now, isn't that a very honorable king? <laughs> These kind of people touch my heart. Remember, I have always told you, that doesn't matter how you earn your living. Some of you say selling tofu, some of you say go out clean the windows, some of people say they go and do cleaning the office in the morning, and then uh, daytime work in the center, and then nighttime meditate, or meditate and work, work and meditate. Yeah. Doesn't matter how you earn your living. I told you many times, I have so much respect for you if you earn your living honestly. You see? And even in the ashram when I was in Taiwan, eh? and when I was always living in Formosa before, I have never like uh, um, make more friends with the uh, scholarly or rich, uh, came from a richer family uh, residence and uh, stay away from uh, those uh, like, uh, I would say, uh, woodsmiths or, <laughs> you know, a laborer, never. In fact, I invite them all the time. The one who work, anybody who works diligently, I invite them to my uh, kitchen and have dinner together or lunch together. So, in uh, China, we have a similar tradition. Uh, I forgot the name of the master who works all day, and if he say one day he doesn't work, one day he doesn't eat. 
until he is very old, he continue working, continue working, working and working. So one day he is so old already, his disciple hide his tools. Because he went out and plant vegetable to eat. <laughs> but he, they hide his tools so that he cannot work anymore. And that day he doesn't eat. One day no labor, one day no food. That's it. That's his motto. And he lived his example until his ripe old age. It has by no means to say that you all have to work so hard like him, like that, you know. But what I mean is whatever you feel, whatever your expertise, you do it with all your heart, yeah, to offer your best to the world, to contribute your talent to the society without thinking uh, how much I will get for that. As much as I get, as much as I put out my effort, I will not spend one more <laughs> minute, you know, without getting paid. That is the attitude of the spiritual practitioner. We work wholeheartedly and, if possible, unconditionally when we have to. Yeah. Uh, I told you the spirit of the uh, Japanese people, no? Yes. They also work very hard to rebuild their country. Yeah. They have this sacrifice spirit, yeah, and honest to their company, to themselves, to, comp uh, to, to the country. Uh, therefore, Japanese uh, recover very quickly after the war, yeah? even though they had to pay a lot of debt to many nations due to uh, the fact that they lost in the, in the war. Even then, they recover quick and become one of the most successful and strong and powerful countries in the world. If we, the spiritual practitioner, just have that kind of mentality, also we will be very, uh, very quick in uh, progressing in our spiritual practice as well as earning a living. Yeah. So I have told you many times, here, you are equal in my eyes. Whether you sweep the street to earn your money, um, you collect the garbage and uh, dispose it to earn a living, uh, you work uh, in a carpenter jo job, or you are a prime minister of this land, I don't care. Yeah? You are the same. <laughs> ah. Okay, we go back to Delhi. <laughs> Bzzz, aeroplane landed. <laughs> now, it is as the brother has said. Are you Muslim, by the way? You are Hindu? Buddhist. Buddhist. Hmm. Good. Good that you study all the religion. Yes. These spiritual books are abound in uh, India, and they sell them cheap yeah? price, you know, reasonable price for India. Now, it is as the brother has said, the Buddhist brother who studied Muslim has said that <laughs> the king wrote copy of the Quran and sell them in the market by his servants. And whatever he earned from that, he took care of himself and his family. No, 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 okay? And uh, one of his servants, has not uh, got any money for many months. And then uh, when one day he received a letter from his uh, family from far away, you know, the servant, asking him to come home immediately for some urgent matter, yeah. And he needed the money to go home and to give to the family, of course. Né? Normally this servant, you must know, a servant of this kind of the king, must also have been a very good spiritual practitioner. So more probably he just worked, you know, he doesn't even care about salary. Yeah. But the king probably would give him some pocket money, you know, for monthly, <laughs> monthly <laughs> snacks. <laughs> so the servant needed to go home. His servant needed to go home. And the king said, I'm sorry, I don't have any money just now. <laughs> what a king. <laughs> what a poor king. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so could you uh, wait a little bit? 
And just some months passed already, and the servant really needed to go home because he received again a message from family saying that he must come immediately. Yeah. Some family member have been sick and perhaps dying, and they need some money for that. So uh, he begged the king, oh, please let him go home. Yeah. All right. When he was ready to leave, the king gave him two rupees. My God, that's about liang mao, uh, <laughs> two cents, yeah, of Taiwanese money, not two cents American money even. <laughs> but mind you, uh, India, in India, the standard of living, uh, the price of living is not that expensive. Yeah, I have lived like like in a, like two rupees per day when I was there. So the king gave the servant two rupees <laughs> and off he went. <laughs> By the way, the king told the servant that this money, uh, although it's very little, but it's from my honest earning, therefore it will attract abundance. It has God's heaven blessing. Everyone knows that it's very pure money. Yeah? In the heaven, know that. So don't worry. You just uh, be happy with it. Although the servant was very surprised at such a great amount of two rupees, <laughs> equally to two cents in Formosa NT. Yeah. Mean nothing. <laughs> mean nothing at all, <laughs> even at that time. So, but. Uh, he said, God will bless you with abundance because my money is honest. So please go on your way and don't worry about it. God will bless you. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> so the servant went. He cannot do anything. The king had no money. <laughs> what can he do? <laughs> so he went away with the two rupees. But even though he has trust, faith in the king, in his mind, he still wondered how would he face his family with an empty hand. Yeah, when he came home, his family would expect some gift. Being a worker, a servant of the king, yeah, coming home with empty hand, how is he going to explain to his family? Because the world people are like that. Yeah? If you work for the king or if you have a high position in the in the world, your family, your relatives expect you to provide grandeur of gift, monetary or otherwise. Yeah, this is normal, no? So the servant was having a hard time, walking with heavy heart, thinking what to do. And meanwhile, uh, he's still having to go home. No? Uh, on the way home, he cannot have money for any luxury items or car or anything like that. Uh, but he uh, happened to see some delicious, ripe, red, juicy uh, pomegranate. You know, pomegranate. It's like a red apple, and inside they have transparent ruby-like small, small, uh, how do you say, seed. And flesh is very beautiful construction inside. It's like a piece of jewel when you open it, you know. Yeah. So he bought, uh, he uh, gave the two rupees, you know. He gave it all. He thought he could buy only one uh, pomegranate to satisfy his desire. Because uh, might as well, two rupees, he can't buy much anyway. <laughs> Nothing much he can uh, spend with it. So he wants to buy the pomegranate to eat. But he was surprised that for two rubies, he got a big bag of pomegranate. Okay, he was very happy. And he ate just a little bit. Yeah, and then he's satisfied already. It just happened that he's still having pomegranate in his hand, in his bag, and then he passed over the border to another country. Now, the queen of that country was uh, very ill at that moment, and the uh, 
the physicians of their country advised the king that only uh, the Jews of pomegranate would heal queen sickness. But in that country, there is none of such thing, and they don't know where to find it. So they put uh, announcement everywhere, you know, uh, they tape announcement everywhere. So whoever can find pomegranate, please uh, bring it to the court, and the king will reward them abundantly. Ha! Now the servant have a big bag of pomegranate, and he's next to the palace already. So he asked to come in and give it to the queen, of course. And the queen take as much as she needs, and the king so happy that the queen recovered, reward this servant of the king of Delhi, uh, India king, one thousand rupees for each pomegranate. Wow. Now, can you imagine how much he has, huh? At least 10 or 12,000 rupees. That's a lot of money. <laughs> so he was very, very happy, happy. Yeah. He gave a little bit to the shoulders. Even the king sent two soldiers, you know, a military man, to accompany him home fearing that with so much money he might be robbed or be in danger. Ha! <laughs> what an honor, huh? What an honor. So after he reached home, he gave the two shoulders a little bit of money, and then the rest he gave it to his family, and everybody was overjoyed and praising the king of Delhi <laughs> for his generosity, <laughs> and the servant said nothing. <laughs> yeah, just as the family expected. Yeah, the servant of the king brought home lots of money, lots of gifts, you know, because he bought a lot of gifts on the way home and gave it to them. Everybody was happy and praising the king to heaven. Yeah. Now, just from two rupees, hmm, the servant has earned a rich harvest of uh, property and <laughs> possession and make the whole family and clan happy. Yeah. From now on, of course, the servant will be more faithful to the king, uh, even though he was already faithful before, but he pro probably believed more in the king, dignity, saintliness, honesty, and pure heart inside. End the story. <laughs> now, wasn't that a beautiful story? Mm, okay. I wish you all the best for New Year and every day, and uh, take my love with you. It's the best I can offer. We see each other always in dream, in vision, and you are in my heart.